Hi, it's Steve. In this video, we'll look at the most common causes why your front load washer won't start. We'll look at the typical parts that may cause this problem, where they're located, and how to test them. The most common part to cause your washer to not start would be the door switch or door lock assembly. Typically, if the display will light up on your washer, you can assume that the inlet power is making it to the control board and the user interface board. If you can typically select a cycle, our next step to look at would be that door lock or door switch assembly. Now the door switch door lock assembly is located in behind the front panel. There will be an opening for a strike that is located on the door itself. And there's also typically a separate door switch as part of that assembly. The door switch is easy to test using a multimeter. To test the door switch, first of all locate the terminals that are associated with it. We'll attach our leads from our multimeter to both terminals. As we depress the switch, we should see continuity on our meter. You will require the wiring diagram for your particular model before you can test the door lock switch and the solenoid that operates the lock assembly. This style of door lock assembly is a switch clearly marked as to what the terminals are. Again, we'll simply use our leads from our multimeter, attach to the proper terminals, and we can check to verify that that switch works properly. Now, in addition to the door switch itself on the door lock assembly, some models require that the door actually will lock before any functions will operate. Now, typically, when you start a wash cycle, you will hear the door lock magnetic coil or solenoid operate, perhaps deactivate, and then operate again. Some models will actually have an indicator light in the display to tell you that the door is locked. If those functions are not working properly, you can assume then that your door latch is defective and will need to be replaced. I'll give you a brief display of how that door lock assembly works. Choose any random cycle. You hear the door lock. We hear it unlock, and then it should lock again. Now the cycle will continue. Now if your washer attempted to go through that sequence but did not start, you might assume that the door latch assembly is defective. Depending on the model, again, you may be able to test both the lock and unlock solenoids in that lock assembly, but it will be difficult to test the door locked switch until you actually activate it, which requires a live voltage test. If the door switch and door lock assembly appears to be working properly on your front load washer, you might assume that we have a control board issue and we'll need to explore that next. Now the next component that we'll look at as a possible cause for a no start condition on your front load washer is the actual control board. Now the control board is typically not located in the console, it is typically located either along the side of the cabinet beneath the main top or towards the back beneath the main top. The control that is behind the console is typically called a user interface and basically sends your commands to the main control board. So our first step will be to identify the location of that control board and really all we can do is look for any loose connections or any signs of any corrosion or arcing at those connection points. If so, we can assume that that control board is defective and will need to be replaced. Now, some models will offer some technical assistance that is typically packed with the product, often behind the lower access panel or in some models beneath the main cover. There are normally some self-diagnostic cycles that are available and they can be initiated using the controls on your user interface. So check your model to see if that information is available for you. So with the main top removed, we've located the main control board at the back of this washer. And essentially what we want to look for is any signs of arcing or corrosion around any of these terminals. To make sure all the connectors are firmly attached 
have not become loose that could cause that problem. If there doesn't appear to be anything visible, you can actually open up that case and expose the internal circuit board itself to give a closer inspection. Of course, you'll want to disconnect power to the washer before you even remove the main top. And also take caution when removing these connectors if you choose to inspect the board. If you see any components that are overheated, so any signs of corrosion on these terminals, you'll need to replace that control board. Now a third component that we might consider as causing a problem of a no start condition would be the user interface control. This is typically part of the main control housing and is only accessible by removing the main top and then lifting that console away from the washer so that we can inspect the actual user interface board. If you find that your user interface display lights up but none of the functions will activate you might suspect that that's the problem. Now once we've removed that user interface board, we'll just view it from the back side. First of all, we'll inspect for any signs of arcing or corrosion or damage to the actual control boards themselves. If none is evident, we'll inspect the connection from the user interface that goes to the main control board verify that the connection is tight and again that there are no signs of any arcing or corrosion on those terminals. Now even if you do find that there are no signs of damage to the user interface board, you may still have a defective board. Now if there is no apparent damage on either of the user interface boards or the connector itself, you may wish to consult the technical information that is packed with your product and it may contain information that will tell you which of the terminals on that output cable are associated with the individual push buttons on the user interface control. Those can be tested with a multimeter. With that information, you may determine whether or not we have a defective touchpad inside on that user interface board, in which case it will need to be replaced. If no information is available for your model, you can only guess as to whether that may be the problem or whether it is your main control board. Now, if you were able to source the technical information for your product, check to see if there is a diagnostic test for your particular model. It may allow you to manually operate individual components using the user interface buttons and that will help you to diagnose whether you have a problem with that user interface or with the main control board. Now a not so common cause of a washer to not start could be the motor control board. Most front load washers use a motor control board to control the motor direction and speed. This control board is usually located at the very bottom of the machine and is accessible by removing the lower access panel at the front. In certain conditions, if this motor control board is defective, the washer will attempt to start. But once it finds that it cannot operate the motor, it will shut down and not start. You can visually inspect that motor control board for any signs of arcing or corrosion at the terminals or on the printed circuit board itself. Now to check that motor control board, you would remove the lower access panel, remove the connectors to the motor control board typically sits in keyhole slots on the base frame with maybe one retaining screw. Pull the board out and then do a visual inspection for any signs of arcing or corrosion near any of the connectors or on the circuit board itself. With most front load washer models there will be some technical information included with the product that will help you troubleshoot as to whether you do have a problem with the motor control board or with the communication between main control board and the motor control board. Because of the location of the motor control board, it is a little more susceptible to moisture and therefore possible corrosion on the control board itself or on the terminals that attach to the main control board. There's typically a plastic shield that surrounds that, but it does not prevent that motor control board 
from being exposed to a harsher environment. So the first thing, check all around that board, look for any signs of corrosion or arcing, and if so, you may suspect that that motor control board is defective. Now most front load washers today have sophisticated electronics in them that have some self-diagnostics. So typically when we have a symptom with a front load washer, whether it is a no start condition or it's a drain condition, something like that, typically the first thing we're going to look for is a fault code that should show up in the display. In this particular case, we're looking for a washer that does not start. We've picked a cycle. Activate the start button. We hear the door lock. And now we're getting a fault code. In our display, we see fault code F11. If we consult the technical information that is supplied with that product, typically there is a section in here that deals with fault codes. If we look at this particular one, we see that there is a motor control unit error. If we read through that, we'll see that there is typically a problem with either the motor control board, the motor, or the communication between the main control board and that motor control board located at the bottom of the washer. Now there is one other part that may cause a no start situation with a front load washer and typically with this type of problem there will be no indicator lights whatsoever on the console. That would indicate that we have no power getting to that user interface board or perhaps not even to the main control board. Now to test this, first we want to verify that the outlet that your washer is plugged into is live. So simply plug in another appliance and verify that. If you verify that your outlet is fine, our next step will be to remove the main top and we'll look at the line filter to see if that's where our problem might lie. The line filter is used to filter out noise in the incoming power supply to prevent damage to either the user interface board or the main control board. It's typically located right where the power cord comes into the back of the washer and we can check it easily by just removing the top. Now before we remove the main top, we will remember to disconnect power to the washer. We've located the line filter. You can see where the power cord comes into terminals on the bottom. Then power exits the very top of that line filter and feeds off to the control board. Now this test will involve using a multimeter and a live voltage, so if you're not comfortable with doing that, either contact a technician or an electrician to perform the test. If you are comfortable with measuring live voltage circuits, simply set your meter to the appropriate voltage scale. In this case, we're looking at 120 volts AC, so we'll go to the 200 volt AC scale. Since we verified that we have power at our outlet, we'll next check the outlet from the line filter itself. You can either check it right at the line filter or where it enters the main control board. In this case, we have no voltage applied to that main control board. To test the harness, we'll go right back to the line filter itself. And again, we see that we have no AC power to supply the main control board. Thank you so much for watching this video. We certainly hope that it was helpful to you. And remember to subscribe so you don't miss a thing.